Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this English 102 quick tip video. I'm Brian, the host of this little show, and today we're talking about poetry. So, let's get started. Okay, so it's about this time in class where we get together and I ask people what they think poetry is and I get all kinds of answers. Mostly, it revolves around things that people don't really like all that much, which is totally fair because they think about poems as sort of a really old form or it has a certain kind of language or they're all about love. Well, I'm here to tell you, that is not true at all. One of the things I believe about poetry is that uh, they're kind of like pictures that we might see on the internet. They're really sort of snapshots, of uh, snapshots, uh, moments in time really, uh, about the lives of us. So I think of all the things that we look at this term, the stories and the plays and the poems, the poems can be the most accessible and the most interesting. I promise, you just have to trust me on this one. So when I first started FCC, I had the chance to interview uh, several poets that the school invited as to, invited to campus as a part of our co-curricular days. First poet I got to uh, interview was a guy named Brian Turner, and he was an Iraqi war veteran, super interesting point of view, and in fact, we're gonna be reading one of his poems a little bit later in the course called What Every Soldier Should Know. And then I got to look at, well, I got to interview um, a gentleman named Lee Young Lee, who's also in our book as well. And what a fantastic experience to talk to him about his life and work. Um, plus, great book too. And we're going to be reading some of his work too in this class as well. And then uh, I got a chance to, to interview another guy named Eamon Grennan. And when we first met, he uh, called me his long lost Irish brother, which I totally appreciated. Um, it was a lot of fun to sort of talk to these very interesting people uh, about their work. And it wasn't necessarily about uh, any grand themes, but it was about the, or the very personal and things that really mattered to them about their relationships, um, about the world that they live in, about the environment, all the things that I think we think about too. It's a little windy out, so I'm going to be uh, holding the tripod and looking at my notes a little bit. Uh, I think the first thing that you guys should know is that the best poems uh, help us see into a moment. That can be personal, political, social. Um, it could also be environmental. It can be structural in terms of how our society works. We're going to look at a few poems like that. Um, we can also see first and foremost too that when you look at a poem, you're going to get a feeling from it, what we might call a mood or a theme. And the theme is just the overall idea that is emerging from that particular work. So one of the other questions that people ask often is, who's the narrator of the poem? Uh, sometimes when you think about these types of narration circumstances, you should think about sometimes, in fiction, remember how we said it can be first person, but not necessarily the author. In poems, it can be first person and it's likely going to be the author in many certain cases, but sometimes not. Uh, very often, the narrator of a poem might be uh, in a third person circumstance that has this kind of all-knowing perspective that can look around, see, and see into everything. So that's kind of one of the deals with poetry. So it just depends. So you have to keep your eye out for that. All right, now in the, to end this poem, I wanted to sort of talk to you guys about Mary Oliver. She's another poet that's going to be featured in our work this week. Um, and this poem is called Mindful, and I just wanted to read you guys the best parts and talk about the, uh, the feeling that I get from it. So here's a poem called Mindful by Mary Oliver. Every day I see and hear something that more or less kills me with delight, that leaves me like a needle in a haystack of light. It's what I was born born for, to look, to listen, to lose myself inside this soft world, to instruct myself over and over in joy and acclamation. Nor am I talking about the exceptional, the fearful, the dreadful, the extravagant, but of the ordinary, the common, the very drab, the daily presentations. Oh, good scholar, I say to myself, how can you help but grow wise? With such teachings as these, the untrimmable light of the world, the ocean shine, the prayers that are made out of grass, question mark. And what I love about this particular poem by Mary Oliver and all the best poems do this is they leave you with a feeling. Uh, her feeling is one of wonder, but also with a question. She leaves with this idea that, yeah, 
how can you go wrong by just being curious? So that's where I want to end today. Uh, poems should, should leave us feeling that way. We should feel a sense of wonder and delight by looking at these things. Though some might make us a little sad sometimes, that's part of the drill too. So thanks for watching this video about poetry, and we'll see you in workshop two. Um, peace.